When I'm online, I log on to TomorrowPictures.tv. Now, you've uh, been an educator, a teacher uh, in Chicago for a, a good number of years, so you've had the opportunity to uh, build relationships with people, uh, things like that, watch people grow up. So you, you do have a very strong working knowledge of uh, what works and what doesn't for young people um, as well. So um, my question is, uh, for you, what was the reward in, in dedicating your life to being an educator or a teacher? Well, I feel that teachers can give children many of the things that they don't get at home, like good manners, um, teach them how to eat properly, eat the right foods, and take them on field trips so that they know um, what Chicago has to offer its residents. It, and being a teacher is also like being a surrogate mother. You can help children with their personal problems. We don't all have the same problems, but it's so good that children have a teacher that they can tell their troubles to. And many times the teacher can help the children solve some of the problems they have at home. And the teacher can also communicate with the parent and let the parent know things that the child needs, possibly things that the parent was not aware of. Uh, so the home and the school is um, brought closer together when the teachers reach out to the children and try to help them with their personal problems. And they can also have conferences with the parents and talk to the parents about uh, various things that they can do to make the children's lives more um, worthwhile and so forth. Okay. Um, let's, in sort of staying along with that same train of thought, let's talk about your family um, and uh, your children. You had three children. Um, let's. Uh, very quickly, we'll just sort of name them, uh, and then we'll move on from, from, from there. We'll focus more on your uh, middle child. Uh, My quick. three children were Robert, Gloria, and Gerald. Robert was the older one. Gloria was the middle child, and Gerald was the baby. <laughs> So does the, uh, the sort of the myth about children hold true as far as the, the oldest child, the middle child, and the youngest child as far as behavior is concerned? It's very as possible. Um, I think uh, there are cases where it's true that um, the middle child doesn't get the attention that the oldest child gets and the younger child gets, which is okay because um, children get love from other people. You know, if they don't get all the love they need at home, they can get it from the school, from the church, and other organizations. 
Well, certainly your middle child has done very well for herself. <laughs> Which we're always very impressed and very proud about that with her. Um, your husband, Robert, uh, he was someone that you met here in Chicago or did you meet him in Memphis? I met him in Memphis. We grew up together. We were in the same grade school and the same high school. And he served in World War II. Right, he did. Mm -hmm. And after World War II, um, you got married and moved here? Or we, did got, you we got married during World War II. In fact, it was the year before we married the year before um, the war ended. What was it like to live during uh, or live through World War II um, as, as, as well? For a lot of people now, you know, it's very difficult for them to understand what it's like to live in the world with it sort of hanging in the balance. World, uh, World War II brought many jobs to poor people who would have never had jobs had it not been for the war. That was one advantage. And they migrated to larger cities to get jobs and the schools in the cities where many of them went uh, had better curriculums than the ones in the South. So I consider that an advantage. Interesting. I've, I've never heard anyone uh, articulate it that way, but that makes a lot of sense, um, especially for people that were um, very poor and that they made a huge contribution to the, to the war effort. Um. Exclusively on TomorrowPictures.tv Tomorrow Pictures. The story is in the telling. <laughs>